Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new tutorial video by WTTN and today we'll be talking about actuators with Spring Boot. So essentially, actuators provide a mechanism for your Spring Boot application to be available for health checks, for debugging, for thread dumps, for information and all those fun little things using API endpoints. So that's the purpose of an actuator. It essentially is being used to you know, give some information about your application when it is up and running. Um, if there is any kind of problems in connectivity with dependent applications or with dependent systems, uh, that's where you will use your actuator endpoints to understand what's really going on uh, behind the scenes when the application is up and running in your JVM. So uh, this mechanism comes from Spring MVC, but it's obviously it's carried forward in Spring Boot as well. And uh, it's fairly easy to enable and, and run your application, application with the actuators. So anybody who is building a new application should enable the actuators by default. There are a bunch of actuator endpoints that I will be putting up on the screen. Uh, you guys can take a look at it. I'll add a link to the description as well. But uh, by default, if you enable uh, the Spring Boot um, actuators, you, what you'll get is I think health and info are enabled by default. And if you want to enable the rest of the uh, API endpoints, you just need to uh, add it to uh, add a property in your properties or YAML file and you'll have those enabled as well. So today we'll be, uh, I'll be showing you how to enable your default actuators and we'll just quickly look at that process. So this is the application that we have been using for our Spring Boot demo. So let me just run this application. It does not have any actuators enabled uh, by default. So I'm just gonna run this application. It's gonna take a couple of seconds. There we go. Now we'll jump on to Postman. Now to get a list of all your actuator endpoints, which are enabled, on your application, you just need to hit the slash actuator endpoint. You don't need to worry about your application context, um, uh, like the root of your application, right? You don't need to worry about that. Just put the, uh, whatever is the uh, source, uh, localhost and the port, and then actuator. So let's send a request. So you see it's throwing us a 404. So by default, I haven't enabled uh, the actuator at all. So how do I enable it? Well, it's it's fairly simple. Everything is fairly simple in Spring Boot. So all you need to do is you need to add one dependency called Spring Boot Starter Actuator. So I had earlier added it, but I I had commented it out just to uh, show you guys like what happens if you don't add this dependency. So once I added this dependency, you just need to do a clean install, um, or you just need to re re-import your Maven dependencies, and that's it. So once you've done that, I'm just going to rerun the application. So it's going to start up in a couple of seconds. Let's wait for it. There we go. So once it starts up, I'm going to hit the actuator endpoint. And now you can see that we have a couple of endpoints already here. So by default, it's giving us health and uh, a health path, uh, which are enabled for us. So what we can do now is let's hit the actuator slash health endpoint. So if you just hit the actuator endpoint, you'll get all the links or the all the actuator uh, endpoints that are available to you for this particular application. And if you hit actuator slash health, it's going to give me the status as up. But how does it know like the status is up, right? And what basis does it determine that the status is up? Well, this is something which is enabled by default for you in Spring Boot. So if you hit this endpoint and the and the server is able to serve you this particular endpoint, that means that the status is up. Um, in the next video, what I'll do is I will extend the health endpoint to make it more robust, to make it more uh, customized, not robust, to make it more customized to your application. So maybe you want to check if your database is up or not, if you want to check your cache is up or not, and you want to make these three or four checks and then determine if your application is actually up or not. That's very easy to do. You can do that very easily. So I'm going to show you that process in the next uh, next video. So this is how basically you just enable your actuator and it it will give you um, it will give you an endpoint which you can use to monitor your application. So this. These endpoints essentially are used by other monitoring applications or systems in place 
uh, which basically are used in your uh, infra level, uh, infra world, I would say, where other systems and applications are monitoring what happens with your application in production. Uh, they need statistics, the uptime, the downtime, and all those things. So these endpoints are used there. So anybody who is developing a Spring Boot application or any kind of web-based application needs to make sure that they have their actuators enabled. At least the default one should be available because otherwise it's gonna give you a lot of problems in production. So uh, yeah, this one is all about the basic of actuators and the basic health endpoint. Uh, in the next video, let's explore how to you know build on top of the uh, health endpoint and also we'll take a look at the other uh, actuator endpoints that we have available for us. If this video was helpful to you, I would surely appreciate a like. And if you want to see future videos, get notified about them. Do, do think about subscribing. Thank you for watching. Have a great time.